Hey everybody, it's March 24th, 2020. It was supposed to be our state CDEs today and it's not. So I've asked uh, Sadie to come in and do a recording on ready to cook carcass grading, which is a part of our contest that we were uh, anticipating to have at the state CDE this year. I think it'd be a great opportunity to learn a little more about that. So this video will be a resource for teachers and students who uh, want to grade and learn, learn a lot about carcass grading and placing a class of ready to cook in this case, it'll be national turkeys from the national FFA contest in 2019. Sadie, thank you so much for coming in. I'm going to mute my microphone and let you have the floor. Thank you very much, Dr. Smith, for having me on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and first show you the link where this video will be shared at. So I'm going to share my screen at this time. Um, with, uh, with you guys. It should be popping up right now. You should be able to see. Um, Dr. Smith, do you see my screen now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. So if we go to our uh, LAFFA webpage. And you can scroll down. The quick links here has the uh, COVID-19. You can click on the e-learning. And when you come down to curriculum webinars for. It's actually going to be in the virtual lessons. Come on. Virtual now. lessons. I'm sorry. There, there it is. Click here. They have a few already that some of you may be interested in looking at that we've already done. And it's going to be right in here. You'll be able to click on this. Um, they also have right here the um, PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to show you right now. I'm not going to click on this link and pull it up because it takes a little long to download and Rural internet's a little slow here. Um, so I'm gonna start this presentation. Um, this is the pictures and video that Dr. Smith took from the 2019 um, National FFA contest. Um, so what I did was I kind of went through it and we will have a RTC placing class at the state level. And it's not gonna be turkeys, it's gonna be broilers. and we re the reason we we stick to broilers and not so much turkeys is because it gives you an idea of what the ready to cook placing class looks like if you go to nationals and see it but from a practicality standpoint it's a whole lot easier for you guys to use broilers than it is for you to have to go out and buy four turkeys to specifically train for this so um we use broilers on the state level um but this is going to be a turkey class so the biggest thing you have to remember when you're looking at this is the differences in weights and what um, you're going to need. I, I pulled up this um, specification paper. This comes from um, this manual right here, the poultry science manual, which FFA has on their website, but I did put the links here. You can purchase this manual. It's 70 bucks, so it's a little pricey. Um, but if you purchase one, you can do a pretty good job of making copies of it. The free resource down here has most of this stuff in it, but it is a lot it has a lot more detail where this is just condensed on the manual side for what you need. So it, I kind of like this look better. Um, and I did put this out here so you guys can see what we do when we place a class um, and what you need to look for. So you're going to, this is going to be important right here. This carcass weight on a state level, we use two to six pound carcasses. So this is going to be the requirements you're going to need to look for on the national level, the birds that we're looking at today, are gonna be on a six to 16 pound level. So you're gonna be using this criteria here. So that's where your difference is gonna come in. But um, when you look at the things that are not in the manual, I listed a couple of them so you could know. Um, when you're gonna place a placing class, the first thing you're gonna do is actually grade them out. You're gonna give them, assign them each a grade. So you're gonna look at the four birds and you're gonna decide whether they're A, B, C, or non-gradable. And then from there, you rank them. And obviously, your A is going to be first on down the line. Well, I can guarantee you they will have two birds that are going to be the same rank. How do you tell them apart? Breast size and quality. So um, I did put in this PowerPoint what's not in the manual because nowhere can you find or that I've ever seen, but I have been told by officials what makes any bird non-gradable. And this is going to be on ready-to-cook placing or when you are just having any ready-to-cook class. So what makes it non-gradable? The only thing that will make a carcass non-gradable is an appreciable amount of meat loss. 
Now you can find that in the manual, but what you can't find is what determines what non-gradable means. What is non-gradable? Well, it means that it's no, it's no bigger than a byte or a silver dollar. That's what I've been told. So you kind of take it from there. So if they have actual meat missing, that's about the size of a silver dollar or bigger, it's going to be a, that's an appreciable amount of meat loss. And that makes it non-gradable. Everything else, you're going to still grade it A, B, or C. And then the other thing that nobody tells you about is processing tears. Um, the first processing tear you can have is going to be at the tip of the keel bone. And it can, on a two to six pound brawler or even a six to 16 pound turkey, it can be up to an inch on that keel bone right at the tip. And it can also be around the, there's also another processing tear around the tear, tail, excuse me, that you can have. And that can be up to an inch and that will not depreciate the quality grade of the bird. So those are the only two spots where otherwise anywhere on the breast, a quarter of an inch or more on a two to six pound bird is going to drop it down. If it's over a quarter of an inch, we'll drop it down a letter grade. That processing tear at the tip of the keel does not drop it down as long as it's under that inch mark. And that's going to be the same for a six to 16 pound bird. So I wanted to be kind of clear on that. And so again, how do you place an RTC class? First going to look at it and you're going to determine the carcass grades based on weight then obviously the highest grade is going to be best down to lowest. And then from there, we use breast size to determine what where they're going to rank. So if you have two Bs in the class, then you're going to look at those two B carcasses and you're going to look at the size and the depth. I was told that you want it to look like, you want that breast to look like a brick and you want it to be thick and you also want it to be wide. It's dimensional. And that's kind of where you have to think. And then uh, sometimes those uh, breasts tend to taper towards the tip of the keel, but you want one to stay full and solid as far out as possible. So the next few slides actually come from the 2019 RTC class that that we filmed. Or, and so I showed the pictures first because I like you to be able to see it. And I think you can best grade the quality grade based on the picture. So when I look at it, um, we, we showing from this angle right here, I'm looking at these two carcasses. There's no processing tear here at all. Um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of problems uh, with this carcass so far as I look at it. Um, we have another end when we turn to the back side of the carcass. This is where the tail has been removed and that's gonna definitely be a problem. So this is gonna deteriorate the grade of the carcass, okay? So when I look down at it, um, how far does it go? Well, does it go more than halfway to the hip bones? Because the hip bones are right here. If it is over halfway, that drops it down to a C. If it's anywhere from like half, which would be about at this point, I, don't, I hope you can see my mouse going up, um, it would be a B. Anything less than flush down to half is going to be a B, but anything over half here is going to make it a C. So this bird I'm definitely marking as a C, and that's the first thing I'm going to do. Then I'm going to move to my next bird. First thing I notice, okay, here's that processing tear I was talking about, and you can see it quite clearly. Is this over an inch? Absolutely over an inch. Um, so on this turkey here, turkeys on the breasts and on the um, backs of the turkeys, it is over two inches I mean, over a half inch that on the those meaty parts, that's going to deteriorate it if the flesh or the skin is torn. So this is definitely over an inch on the process. And then it's definitely over that half inch line. So when I look at it, I'm automatically starting them at a B. And then I'm going to roll and look to my next slide to see if there's any problems on the back. I don't see any problems or anything that I would be concerned with on the back that would make it anything less than a B. So I'm going to move to my next carcass. So this is going to be marked as a, a B carcass. When I go into three, I'm gonna look at three. And so far I see back, I see front. I don't see any problems, don't see any marks, no blemishes. Um, so far, this should be an A carcass. Yeah, that was the only two pictures we had on three. So this is definitely an A carcass. So I'll mark that down. Then I go to four. When I look at four, I see a flesh tear here. This is over that half inch mark. And then when I look here, this processing tear is definitely over an inch. Okay, so I feel like we have enough here to downgrade this one to a B. So right now I'm sitting with one as a C, two as a B, three as an A, and four as a B. So I know that three is going to be my class winner because it is an A carcass. But then I have to decide between two and four. And this is where I feel like the video... Um, 
really helps you out because you can actually see the breast size and shape as he rolls the, the video around. So I'm going to play the video real quick and let you see it. So we're not really concerned with one because uh, we said it's C, so it's going to go last. And again, when you look at those hip bones, you can see those cuts. You can see that cut at the bottom on the neck too as well. That would deteriorate the grade of it as well. And again, we have the processing tear that's over that inch mark. Its tail is removed, but the tail to me still looks like it's at the base. It's level with the base. So I wouldn't have discredited it that bird for the base of the tail, but I definitely would for the processing tear. This is number three, which again, I see no, no issues. Um, we turn it around again, there, there's no cuts, nothing. Um, you might look like you have a disjointed uh, wing on there, but uh, it's not, that's going to keep it an A colony carcass. So this is going to be your A. And then when we go to four, we have the, pro the large processing tear. Then we have the cut on the side, the breast uh, that's over that half inch mark. Wing tips can be missing. That's still, that wouldn't have downgraded it. Um, you have a cut here at the base, the tail's removed, but that still doesn't look like a problem to me. So the only thing that's really degrading this carcass is going to be that half inch tear. So there's your two B carcasses right there. But when I look at it, if I go back a little bit, so we, we scroll back around. I'm going to look here for dimension and I'm going to look here for thickness. And when you kind of, when you evaluate them, that's going to be three. So we're not worried about that. We'll go back to two real quick. And I think that's two right there. Yeah. Um, if we go back to two, um, when you look at it, oh wait, I didn't go back far enough. You don't have the size and shape, especially um, underneath that you'd like to see on that two carcass compared to four. Um, four has got a lot more thickness throughout, a lot more dimension, I feel like, and it's also a little bit more even at the bottom. So the class, when you look, is going to be placed three, four, two, one. They cut it four, three, and five. Um, and that's going to be your ready to cook placing class. Um, if you have any questions about it, if anything you see is unclear, um, by all means, please email me. Um, I've answered quite a few questions from people so far. I don't mind um, answering some email questions. You can give me a phone call, whatever. Um, my uh, Number is on, um, I mean, my uh, email address is somewhere, I think, on the web page at some point, but somebody knows how to get in touch with me. But I've gotten a number of emails throughout the uh, here as far as questions when we started training on poultry. And um, again, I don't mind answering any questions if you have them, if you didn't understand it. And I think that's right, it. So that's a pretty typical class according according to your experience. There's usually going to be a, a winner. There's usually going to be an obvious loser, and, and there's going to be two Bs or two Cs, and you're going to have to separate them by. Yeah, by, kind by of. That's kind of typical. Look, I know this that they don't try to. They're not trying to trick you. They're just going to put what's I mean, there. It was kind of tricky though because the number four bird had a cut, had a tear. You know, it, it wasn't as pretty. You wouldn't have thought it was a. When I looked at it, I didn't think it should have been second in the class, but I didn't analyze it knowing all the rules right. and charts that you guys put in. And I know you put in a lot of time memorizing those charts and, and, and practicing this with those kids. I can't think of a better explanation. I mean, you were, as we go through that video and through those pictures, you're, you're pointing things out that are right in front of my face that I just never saw. So it really helps to have an explainer, uh, highlight those things and bring it out. And I really hope that people uh, utilize this and, and learn a lot about placing those classes and that it, it leads to more success for our kids and for the industry. No. And you have to remember this, no matter what makes it a B or a C, like from the time it hits B to the time just before it goes to a C, it's still a B. So if it's a B, no matter what it like, it could because you think about it, it can be a B up to almost a third of the flesh is removed from a specific part. So no matter what, it's still a B though. It might not look as bad as that one little cut um, on one bird, but what's going to make the difference is going to be the breast size and quality that's going to upgrade 
you know, but once it, it once it hits that B line until it becomes a C, they are always a B. So nothing's going to make uh, it be a worse B than another bird. You know, it's going to it's a B, it's a B. And so then from there, that's where you go to uh, breast quality and size and size is the big key. You know, you want it to be straight keel bone straight and stuff like that, but you want it to be big, solid, thick, and it's going to be dimensional. So I didn't hear you. Wait, you, you muted. Uh, this was kind of fun. We should go through uh, like some exterior eggs and some other, even if it's, even if it's not on our state contest, just go some of those national pictures and explain what some of that stuff is. So, so that folks can, uh, can learn a little more about it. Um, I started a PowerPoint on the exterior eggs from the pictures you sent me. So um, as I, as I get it done, I'll, uh, I'll do that. We'll do that. We'll make it work. All right. I look forward to it. Uh, appreciate it. No problem.